Thank you, Ken. It's good to be here. Uh, I always enjoy the opportunity to talk about what we're up to at the, at the Port Authority. And that's what I'm going to do to open this. Uh, going to talk about, uh, even though we have many, many projects, not going to try to cover everything. Uh, not, uh, not trying to cover our state of good repair, which takes fully half of our, uh, of our capital plan. Uh, but I'm going to touch on uh, five projects listed on the on the screen. I'll take them in order. Uh, but the framework in terms of uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate by talking about these projects, uh, hopefully most of you are aware of them, but is uh, it, the port wants to be a poster child for government projects that are actually getting built and they're getting built to a very high standard. Uh, Public-private partnerships are a critical element of how we work. We, we focus on making our projects, our facilities, uh, uh, particularly our new major ones, inspirational as well as functional. Of course, want to be cutting edge in technology. I'm going to use the three airports as proof points and then touch briefly on, uh, on the World Trade Center and the new and coming bus terminal. So starting out with LaGuardia, uh, we've dubbed that a whole new LaGuardia, uh, $8 billion worth of construction, two public-private partnerships, one with LaGuardia Gateway Partners, one with Delta. Two thirds are funded from our, our, private, our private partners and our passenger facility fees so that we're leveraging at LaGuardia, two thirds private part of funding, one third from Port Authority Capital. Uh, the origin of the LaGuardia project, uh, very quickly, Biden labels LaGuardia third world, uh, a new vision plan, entirely new airport, broke ground in 20, well, the vision plan in 2015, broke ground in 2016, very straightforward, just knocked down every single passenger facility with the exception of the landmark marine air terminal, build a new and build an entirely new uh, eight miles worth of new roadways. We had intense construction over five to six years. Thankfully, in terms of the passenger experience, that's largely at an end with the exception of one additional uh, concourse being built airside at Delta, but generally almost imperceptible to the, uh, to the passenger. Uh, to the passengers, just remind everybody that the airport operations never stopped. We kept the full operations going during construction. We expected volume to drop. Instead, pre-pandemic, it did exactly the opposite, but kept setting records, and we were put into a really uh, uh, intense traffic management mode. The, the goals of the, of the project, airy terminal space, natural light, floor-to-ceiling windows, really take advantage of location in terms of striking views of the airfield, of city, uh, city field, of Flushing Bay, and actually, if you pay attention and are in the right direction, extraordinary views of the New York City skyline. As I said, our focus is to make the airports not only cutting edge functional, but appealing and we, the architecture is designed to do that, appealing and inspiring. It includes not only a sense of place, you shouldn't look around, or arriving passengers shouldn't look around and not know it could be, they could be any place. So sense of place, in this case, New York, um, in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, the uh, the uh, art was curated at Terminal B by the public Art Fund and at Terminal C by the Queen's Museum, and we are focused actually on making uh, public art a signature of, uh, of the Port Authority, of Port Authority projects. Of course, cutting edge technology, it applies to ticketing and check-in, best in class security, and we've doubled, actually more than doubled, two and a half times the, uh, the security throughput in order to reduce the wait time in security lines, world-class concessions, tried to really incorporate iconic New York offerings and a real focus on passenger experience, on particular, uh, uh, particular elements of, uh, of travelers, 
So for families, there's interactive children's playrooms and family restrooms. There are designated pet relief stations for individuals traveling with, uh, with animals. And there's also a sensory management room, a little bit of an innovation in the sense of, to the extent they're individuals with autistic or other developmental issues, there's a room where they can get away from the hustle and bustle of the airport. Uh, we've been a success from our point of view in the sense that uh, the project has uh, been gathering awards over the last uh, year that it's been open. Uh, I've listed them, at least some of them. Uh, top first one was at the end of uh, exact, exactly a year ago, it was a panel of international architects who labeled Terminal B the best new airport uh, in the world. But it goes through National Academy of Construction, Urban Land Institute of New York, Design Build Institute of America, and most recently last week, NYC and Co. awarding the project, uh, uh, the project its Visionaries and Voices Award. Uh, the headlines, the reviews from third parties have really been extraordinary, disgraceful to, to breathtaking. New York's LaGuardia Airport, like you've never seen it before, ready when you are, Terminal C is now an art destination. But don't let just don't, don't take my word for it. Let's go to the video. So our goal is to continue to live up to that standard and uh, turning, we wanna go across the, uh, the Hudson to Newark Liberty. Uh, and we have completed construction on, had the ribbon cutting on the brand new Terminal A there. I'll say a few words about that. So overall, the big picture in terms of Newark, Five and a half billion dollar project led by the new Terminal A, public parking and car rental facility, and uh, the rebuild of the way outdated uh, Newark Air Train. Again, similar vision in terms of architecture, light filled, floor to ceiling windows, twice the size of the old Terminal A, but with an attention to functionality. Lead example I would give is that the arrivals frontage where people get their taxis, Ubers, uh, lifts, and uh, private pickups, buses, really uh, built to be much speedier, much more uh, efficient, uh, certainly than the old Terminal A, but just in, in terms of airport architecture in general. Uh, quick picture here, that's the ticketing area. Again, floor to ceiling windows, natural light. Uh, same focus at Terminal A on passenger near needs, expanded security lanes, families, play areas, family restrooms, and as I mentioned, speedier access to ground transportation and also world-class concessions with a New Jersey flavor. Just to give you a sense pictorially, uh, quick picture, that's the uh, children's play area in the Eastern Concourse. And this is another view of the Eastern Concourse, both with, uh, with uh, concessions and, as you can see, plenty of natural light. Also tried to carry forward the theme of inspiring and appealing public art, featuring local artists. Uh, the large-scale permanent artworks, we have pictures of those in a moment, commissioned by the Public Art Fund, but there are also exhibits of 27 local artists uh, selected by the New Jersey Council on the Arts. Uh, this is the mural. There's the mural in the uh, in the arrivals hall baggage claim. It obviously it dominates the space and is really really extraordinary. On the uh, departures level, in fact, it goes through all three their departures areas. There are two uh, hanging very very large public uh, uh, public art pieces. Really striking. You can't see it, but in terms of those rings, the pictures on those rings, and they're both on the bottom and the top, are New Jersey. New Jersey scenes, really, really striking. The first reaction to Terminal A, just a few of the quotes, Newark's stunning new terminal is enough to change the airport's reputation. Uh, bigger, better new Newark airport unveiled. And then my personal favorite was a uh, front page picture or front page article in the art section of the New York Times, first line of which was move over LaGuardia. <laughs> And I think that kind of competition in terms of best in class, art, every feature is a dynamic that we've now got, got going. Really pleased about that. Let's turn to JFK, that's the future, in terms of our, uh, our construction focus. 
Next slide. Four distinct public-private partnerships. Have to remember all four of those were ready to go right at the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020. COVID hits three of them have to be totally renegotiated with the collapse of air traffic. Uh, one's actually started, broke ground construction, continued through, I'll come to that in a minute, but in terms of the entire vision for JFK transformation, total $18 billion of investment, 15 billion private investment, 3 billion of Port Authority, that's a five to one leveraging of Port Authority dollars. Very quickly, in terms of the terminal projects themselves, Terminal 8, which is the American Airlines project, actually got uh, construction got going just prior to COVID, so that continued all the way through. The goal of that was an expansion in terms of allowing British Airways to move in with American. That actually happened on December 1st. Very pleased at that. That was the original time frame that was set. Uh, five new wide body gates, premium lounges, uh, and their, uh, their plans is that they want to have the premier, what they're calling a shuttle service between JFK and London uh, hourly or even more frequently than that, and major concessions upgrades coming in Terminal 8 over the next 18 months. Uh, the next terminal project, term, uh, chronologically, Terminal 4, uh, that's operated by JFK IAT, our private partner, primarily used by Delta Airlines, and the expansions in terms of capacity there will allow Delta to consolidate in Terminal 4 and move out of Terminal 2, which will get demolished, more of that in a minute. Uh, expanded uh, Concourse A, 10 new gates, uh, concession transformation, new, new expanded Delta Lounge, and we're looking for construction on that to finish the end of next year. Terminal 1. Uh, the big kahuna, uh, $9.5 billion terminal. It took an enormous amount of effort to put that, uh, that negotiation back together, uh, but we closed it in June, six months ago. It will be the largest terminal at JFK. Its footprint will encompass both the footprint of the existing Terminal 1, the existing Terminal 2, which is going to be torn down, and the footprint of the old Terminal 3, which was torn down about 10 years ago. So total of 2.4 million square feet of terminal space within a single terminal, primarily international, with 23 new gates. And our goal is to have it be one of the top five global terminals uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, terminal 6, uh, again, had to be completely renegotiated, major terminal, $4.2 billion project. It was a relief to reach financial close and to complete that negotiation three, three weeks ago. It's adjacent to JetBlue's Terminal 5. Its footprints will cover the old footprint of what used to be Terminal 6, which is currently an aircraft parking lot, essentially and Terminal 7 with, if you recall, British Air moving over to Terminal 8 will be demolished and the new Terminal 6 will encompass all of that space. 1.2 million square feet, primarily international, and with the deal closed, we expect constru construction to start early next year. So uh, for those of you who use GF JFK, be prepared for construction diversions uh, throughout, the next, throughout the next five years. But, It'll be worth waiting for, I promise. Uh, just to touch finally on, uh, on coming attractions, uh, we are committed to a wholly new Midtown bus terminal. That is probably the poster child for old, legacy, inadequate, outdated uh, uh, pieces of infrastructure any place in the, in the nation. In the nation. At the beginning of last year, we announced a wholly new plan for what we want to be a 21st century bus transit hub. Uh, it was responsive to issues and complaints that the, uh, that the community had raised in terms of too many buses on the local streets. Uh, and in August of 22, we brought in Foster and Partners and Epstein and Sons as, as project architect. In terms of what we're doing, just quickly, the, rather than just replace in kind the old bus terminal, the footprint of the old bus terminal is in green on the, on the screen. We added what we're calling a staging and storage uh, area, uh, as along with new ramps. The point of that additional building is so that uh, buses that currently pick up and drop off on the street, 
Mega and Volt as examples, and also will now be in this new facility in terms of using incremental gates. And in addition, the bus terminal itself operates on the basis of maximizing the number of terms so that buses need to pull in right after the previous bus pulls out of its gate. Therefore, they need to sit someplace until they get the signal to come in. Now they're sitting on the street. In the future, they'll be in this new, in this new building, and the new ramps closer to the Lincoln Tunnel will enable buses to enter the, uh, the bus terminal structure without ever touching the street. We want this to be best in class, framework, net zero, all electric buses, artificial intelligence helping with the movement of buses inside the, the terminal. We want a, iconic, appealing food and beverage of the quality that uh, we're attaining at the, uh, at the airports with inspiring and appealing civil architecture and public art, and also making it a real resource for the, for the community. Uh, all to come, we're in the middle of uh, the environmental review, and we uh, intend to push that forward as rapidly as possible. Finally, I want to close just referencing the World Trade Center, 16-acre uh, acre campus in lower Manhattan. Currently, uh, the museum and memorial for 9-11, four office towers, the Oculus contains the path, uh, path station serving the area, but also serves uh, as, a, uh, as a major community resource, and it is really a striking piece of architecture in its own right. We're adding, and we are at the point where they are opening, done, not talk, not words, but actually done, the Performing Arts Center and the Greek Church. Really, uh, they will be iconic pieces of what is really a striking campus where the plantings have matured, the memorial, the office buildings, and now, uh, and Greek Church opened its doors this month. The Performing Arts Center essentially completed, and it'll have its first performance in the next six to nine months. And I just want you to take a look at these pictures. This is the Greek Church lit from behind uh, its, its marble. Uh, the interior is extraordinary, but done, finished a key piece of the, of the campus. And then here's a picture of the outside of the uh, performing Arts Center, it's really going to be striking, not open, but it will open early or mid next year, and that will be an extraordinary completion of the World Trade Center, of which we're very proud. So thank you for listening.